you all want what we don't have. The Stylist, the 2020 female-directed, female-starring horror film starring Najara Townsend and Bria Grant tells the story of Claire, a lonely Kansas City hairstylist who becomes increasingly obsessed and envious of her clients as we see her slowly unravel and spiral out of control as she turns to extremely gruesome mutilation and murder as a means to cope with her intense feelings of inadequacy, ultimately leading to a conclusion that will leave you both shocked yet sympathetic. Before we get into this amazing movie, I'm going to ask a favor of you. Please like like this video, do me a favor, please give this video a like and think about subscribing. Liking and commenting helps the algorithm and it helps push my videos to more folks like you who love horror movies. With that out of the way, let's jump into this review of The Stylist. Now The Stylist holds a special place in my heart because I'm a Kansas City native. I've grown up and lived in Kansas City my entire life and the shooting locations of this movie are just a stone's throw away from where I live now. It was just so cool to see Kansas City represented on the screen, see them talk about Kansas City locations that I'm I'm familiar with to see the beautiful Kansas City skyline in the background of some of these scenes. It was just so, so cool, and it was just icing on the cake that the movie happens to be just amazing. So let's dive into what makes this film stand out, what makes it so unique, and at the end of stay tuned because I'm going to give you guys some recommendations. If you're a fan of the stylist, I have some movies that I really think you'll enjoy, so stay tuned to the end of the video for movie recommendations. Now the stylist is based on a 2016 short film of the same name. In the first 15 minutes of this film, the basic setup is pretty much pulled from that short, with the exception of just a couple differences. It still stars Najara Townsend, who we'll get into in just a second. She's absolutely incredible in this movie. Within the first few minutes of this movie, we get a really nice setup, a super gruesome kill with amazing practical effects, and it gives you a first-hand account of Claire's psychology, what she's capable of, and how things pan out when her plans are carried out perfectly, which later in the movie we find out isn't always the case. Also within this opening, we are introduced to this amazing aesthetic, the surreal dream like tone and cinematography, rich with these warm, glowing, golden tones. It also highlights Claire's meticulous effort that she puts into her appearance. As put together as she seems on the surface, inside she is just absolutely crumbling. Now, after this amazing opening sequence, this is kind of when our main story kicks in and we're introduced to our other main character, Olivia, played beautifully by the wonderful Bria Grant. Now, she is a talented writer-director in her own right, having written and directed the recent 12-hour shift, which was a super fun movie, I highly suggest checking that out. Now, Olivia is planning her upcoming wedding after her usual hairstylist falls through. She then enlists the help of Claire, who doesn't normally do hair for weddings, but is quite inclined to help Olivia after realizing the possibility for a potential friendship. From there, that's when we start to get a closer look at Claire's tendency for obsession. And the impending wedding is a great vehicle for the suspense to come. As we get closer and closer to Olivia's wedding, Olivia becomes increasingly aware of Claire's awkward and obsessive nature, and she becomes more reluctant to be close to her and attempts to sort of distance herself. And the movie gives you these personal moments where it kind of shows you how intense Claire's social anxiety is. There's this scene after Bria Grant invites Claire to hang out with her for the first time and they show her in the liquor store just agonizing over what kind of wine to bring over. You can tell like every little moment of her existence is just excruciating for her with de dealing with social anxiety, insecurity, and all these little things that kind of make her character uh, who she is. That's why you sympathize with Claire Claire so much, even though she does these horrific things throughout the movie. As I said earlier in the view, the wedding is kind of this ticking clock that kind of pushes the suspense throughout the movie. As the wedding does get closer and closer, Claire becomes increasingly more unhinged. And suddenly Olivia's disapproving friends or fiance or even seemingly innocent people like the cashier at the local coffee shop become a target for Claire's murderous intentions. And that's what we'll talk about our lead actress, Najara Townsend. She is just absolutely incredible in this film. Some of you may have seen her in the movie Contracted, which is a really, really nasty little horror film. I would, I would definitely suggest checking that one out. It's great. Townsend in this film gives this incredibly nuanced performance. She's just tremendous in this role. And you somehow feel for her, even, there's, even as she's committing these horrendous acts, she's literally a serial killer. You somehow feel bad for her. You just sympathize with her. You feel like what she's doing is just beyond her control. The circumstances in her life have just led this to be a, a compulsive thing for her. And Claire's character in this movie just would not work 
work without the right actress. It just wouldn't. Now you're basically with Claire, with our main character, every moment of the film. Every text message, every phone call, every awkward character interaction. You're basically with her in every frame of this film, and this character just doesn't work unless the actress pulls off that role. And Townsend pulls off this performance incredibly. As the wedding gets closer and closer, as Claire's character becomes more and more unhinged, it becomes increasingly obvious that this is just not going to end well for anybody. And it leads to a climax that I was just absolutely blown away by. A horror climax in a wedding chapel that you don't see too often. Now I cannot say enough good things about The Stylist. I highly encourage you to check this one out. It's currently streaming on Arrow Player, which is Arrow Video's streaming platform. Right now they actually have a 30 day free trial, which is a really good deal. Usually free trials are only a few days or seven days. This is a full month for free. And if you're familiar with Arrow Video, they put out amazing Blu-rays and physical media. If you're just now starting a physical media journey, Arrow Video is a fantastic place to start. They have a, a bunch of amazing horror films. And The Stylist will be getting an Arrow Blu-ray release later this spring. It was great to see Kansas City done right and represented. It made me so happy to be a Kansas City and, and to see Kansas City represented represented on screen in a badass, brutal horror film. So congratulations to Jill Six. I wish her nothing but success. Now, as soon as I got done watching The Stylist, two movies popped in my mind that uh, this kind of reminded me of. And the first of which being May. If you have not seen May, Lucky McKee's May, this movie is absolutely incredible and shares a lot of similar themes to uh, The Stylist. Both uh, contain a female character who is but played really sympathetically, is a little off their rocker, but is ultimately just a lonely, sad character that really needs a buddy, really needs a friend. And they decide to make their own friends. Um, I don't encourage watching trailers on any movies that I personally watch or recommend. Just take my word for it and go watch May. This movie is incredible with another amazing ending sequence. This movie is batshit crazy, okay? Watch this movie. And um, another connection to the stylist, Bria Grant, who wrote and directed uh, 12 Hour Shift. Uh, Angela Bettis is the star of 12 Hour Shift. So. Both of those movies are great, but definitely check out May. I think you'll really like it if you enjoyed the stylist. Next up, Maniac. Maniac is another tortured soul serial killer type of movie who, yes, does horrific, fucked up things to people and ultimately just kills a bunch of people, but still has a reason behind it. This isn't a mindless serial killer like Michael or something like that. This is a, a character with some depth who does what he does because he has an incredibly troubled past. This movie doesn't have the dark satirical sense of humor that May does. This is definitely just a balls to the wall horror film, a really grimy uh, horror film, but I highly suggest this one out. Uh, I highly suggest this one. This is the Blue Underground release and it recently got a 4K release that looks wonderful. This but guy right here and Claire have a little something in common Comment, and when you see this movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. And finally, the next movie I'm gonna recommend, this does, again, this one doesn't have quite the sense of humor that May does. This is a balls to the wall, brutal serial killer film. Uh, when I say serial killer film, it's a film that really kind of takes you on a day to day with the serial killer showing their day to day operations. And uh, the Golden Glove takes you in an excruciatingly intimate journey into the day-to-day -day life of a serial killer. This is actually based on a real serial killer and real killings that took place in Germany. This movie is really brutal. It's not gonna be for everyone, so kind of tread lightly, I would say. Uh, the Golden Glove is more for a seasoned horror fan, somebody that's seen films like, you know, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer or more kind of gnarly horror films like that, but check out The Golden Glove. And another thing that I didn't even realize until I looked up The Golden Glove on IMDb is that, uh, the lead actor, if you look at his uh, face in the movie and you look at his IMDb photo, uh, IMDb photo, they look like an entirely different person. They made this like really good looking kid, this actor into this grimy, disgusting serial killer. The prosthetics they put on there uh, were just amazing. I didn't even realize he was wearing prosthetics, but he just, it looks, it looks wonderful. Um, great movie. So I recommend May Maniac and The Golden Glove. If you like The Stylist, I think you'll dig those three movies. And guys, that's all I got. Thank you for stopping by for my review of The Stylist. Check out my other reviews. Check out my other videos. Thanks for stopping by. Stay weird, and I'll see you next time. Bye. I love movies. Gosh, I love movies. I love watching them, and I love making them.